In this case, we might give a focal length of, again, say, uh, 10 centimeters. But the object distance in this case would have been, let's say, about 5 centimeters. And let's see what we get. We have 1 over di is 1 over f. Well, remember, 1 over do plus 1 over di equals 1 over f. Or 1 over di equals 1 over f minus 1 over do. 1 over f, that's 1 over 10. Minus 1 over do, that's minus 1 over 5. So we've got 1 over 5, that's 2 over 10. 1 over 10 minus 2 over 10 is negative 1 over 10. So this is negative 1 over 10. di is then negative 10 centimeters. Well, that's just what the focal length is. Well, we've got our drawing just about where the focal point is. If we had done this a little bit more carefully, maybe like on some graph paper or something like that, hopefully this thing would have been right on top of that focal point. So we were kind of close in my drawing here. So that tells us about the image distance. It's negative. What does the negative sign tell us? That tells us it's virtual. And that's exactly what we just saw. What's the magnification? Well, the magnification is minus di over do. In this case, minus negative 10 over do, which was 5. So we have a negative, cancels the negative, 10 over 5 is 2, plus 2. The magnification is plus 2. The positive tells us it's what? Upright, which is exactly what we see. The 2 tells us it is twice as big, and that is just about what we see there. So, very, very good. We can apply, again, the lens equation to this situation, and it seems to work out very, very well. Okay, great. So, there are two ray tracing diagrams for a converging lens. Is there anything that we could do to kind of make an analogous lens situation to what we saw uh, for a um, convex mirror? So we had concave, convex mirrors. Concave uh, mirrors converge the rays. Convex mirrors diverge the rays. We have a con Verging lens, can we make something like a, con, uh, a, a diverging lens? Well, let's see. Remember, we made the converging lens using two prisms. That's how we got the idea. Well, can we do the same thing? Can we use the same idea with the prisms and figure out what a diverging lens would look like? Well, let's draw that, uh, that prism again. So here's our prism, and remember that prism brings these brings these incoming rays and sends them out like that. Well, let's add another prism, but this time let's not add it below, let's add it above. So we'll add another prism, symmetric to the first one, above like that. Now this prism will take incoming rays and send them out that way. So we've got a situation rather than this, like this. What this does is take these incoming parallel rays and diverges them, sends them away. We might trace these back and say, well, the rays in the middle are sent away or diverged from a point close to the prisms. Uh, rays farther away seem to diverge from a point, point further from the prisms. Rays in the middle seem to diverge from points in the middle, relatively, uh, well, I should say somewhere in the middle between the close and the far. Again, what we would like to do is arrange this so that all of these rays come from the same point. Well, the, the ones inside, we need to smooth this out a little bit so that it's not diverging quite as much. So we'll smooth the, the inside out a little bit. We want to bring these far points in. So we want to maybe uh, curve the top and the bottom a little bit more. So we'll curve this a little bit more on the top and the bottom. And what do we end up with? Well, we end up with 
a nice smooth shape that looks something like this. Rather than thicker in the middle and thinner at the ends, we have a lens that is thicker at the ends and thinner in the middle. This is what we will call a diverging lens. There we go. So, uh, example of the converging lens, we might have something like this, where it's thicker in the middle, thinner at the ends, or even just one of them. This would be a plano converging lens, where one side is a flat plane. Now we're talking about a lens that is looking something more like this, thicker at the top and bottom, thinner in the middle, or even just one of these, still thinner in the middle, thicker at the top and bottom. In this case, what do our rays do? Well, we have incoming parallel rays that now are diverged from the same point. So we would trace these back and these all seem to come from the same point back over here. And so our focal point for our lens seems to be over on this side. When we have incoming rays from the left to the right, they are diverged that way. Well, if we have a symmetric lens, and again, we'll use the same trick assuming it's a thin lens, so the thickness at the top and bottom is relatively small compared to the lateral distance. We, we don't even need a symmetric lens. In that case, if we had incoming parallel rays from the right, We're going to do the same thing. These will be diverged out this way, apparently coming from the same point over here. That is, if the rays are coming from the right and come out that way. But then if we do the same trick, rays that go from A to B will go from B to A, we could reverse these. And what does that mean? Any ray that approaches the lens toward the focal point will end up being refracted out parallel. So there we've got two of our principal rays. Let's look at how this compares to the principal rays for the converging lens. In parallel, out through the focal point. Well, that's not quite right. In parallel, we'll go out from the first focal point. The focal point, if you, the rays come from the left, they'll go away from the focal point on the left. So we'll just change this a little bit. Same basic idea, but we need to just change the words a little bit. In parallel, out, not through the focal point, but from the focal point. In through the focal point, out parallel. Well, that's not quite right. We have to go in toward the focal point. And in this case, it's toward the focal point on the other side of the lens. So I'm going to change this one a little bit. In toward focal point, out parallel. Okay, And then... We'll have the same trick that we did with the converging lens, uh, assuming a thin lens. Any ray that comes in through the center will assume goes straight out. So we'll actually have exactly the same third ray in through the center, straight through. There we go. There are our three principal rays. And now let's try a ray tracing diagram for a diverging lens. So let's draw our principal axis. Draw in our diverging lens. Now, in this case, to indicate that this is our diverging lens, remember the overall shape of the lens. To indicate that, we'll actually put tabs on the top and the bottom, but the tabs will go the other way. This kind of gives us an idea that the shape of the lens is really something like this, as opposed to this. So we actually put the arrowheads going the other way at the top and the bottom. All right, good. So let's choose. Let's choose our focal points. Let's say here and here. And let's put our object 
in the same way that we did for our first diagram for the converging lens, let's put our object twice as far from the lens as the focal point. So there we go. Let's draw in our three principal rays. First one, in parallel. So from our object, we draw in an incoming parallel ray. What does that do? It goes out from the focal point. So out from this focal point. So it's going to come out this way. There's our first ray. Second one, in toward the focal point. So from here, not toward this focal point, but toward the second focal point. So we draw in a ray coming from the object toward the second focal point. And what is that going to do? Out parallel. So this ray then comes out parallel. There we go. There's our second ray. Third ray, in through the center, straight through. So, from the object, in through the center, straight through. There we go. Let me just emphasize a, a, an important point here. For these ray tracing diagrams, we always draw in these three principal rays, but those are certainly not the only rays that go from the object and through the lens, or uh, uh, reflect, reflect off of the mirror. There are an infinite number of rays in different directions that uh, strike the lens and go through, or strike the mirror and reflect back. These three are just ones that we are, it, it's easy for us to draw. We can draw these very, very easily. There would be another ray that would go, say, over here and come out, say, somewhere in between parallel and from the focal point. Another one that comes down here and refracts down that way. So there are an infinite number of rays that could be drawn, except we only know these three in particular. And these three are enough for us to figure out where the image is. That's why we use those. Well, again, notice, where are these rays going? They are certainly not going to cross anywhere on the right side of the lens. So we know we don't have a real image. We could imagine, looking at these rays from over here, so here's your eye, looking at those rays, your eye would, or your brain would trace those rays back. Let's figure out where do they appear to come from. Well, we can trace them backwards. And remember, trace these rays back. Don't trace these rays, trace these rays back. This ray appears to come from down here. This ray appears to come from over here. This ray, which is straight, appears to come from there. Also, what do we see? These rays that are traced back, and let me emphasize, let's, let's dot those rays. I tried to dot them, but they didn't quite dot as I was drawing them. They appear to come from the same point over here, so we will draw in our image here. Here we go. There's our image. So here's our object. Here's the image. There we go. Very, very good. Well, let's notice. Our image is upright or inverted? Well, it's upright, the same orientation as the object. What would the magnification be? Well, it is upright, so the magnification would be positive. It looks like it's maybe a half or a third, maybe a third the size of the object. So what would we expect the magnification to be? Uh, positive 0.33 or something like that as an estimate. That's what we would guess. What about the image distance? Well, it is um, a uh, virtual image, so the image distance should be negative. It looks like it's maybe, I don't know, uh, a little bit more than a half, maybe two-thirds of the focal length. So maybe something like uh, two-thirds of whatever the focal length is, but negative. Let's stick in numbers in the uh, uh, lens equation. We have the same lens equation, same convention for the signs. Let's see if we couldn't figure that out. Let's again use a focal length of, let's say, 10 centimeters. An object distance in this case, 20 centimeters. And what do we get? Well, again, 
One, 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F. Let's see if we can solve for the image distance. 1 over F minus 1 over DO. There's one important point, and that is the focal lengths of diverging lenses are negative. So, when I wrote 10 centimeters, we really need to put in negative 10 centimeters when we put that into the uh, lens equation. So what do we have? This is 1 over f, which is 1 over negative 10 centimeters, minus 1 over do, which is 1 over 20 centimeters. So uh, 1 over 10 is 2 over 20. So we've got negative 2 over 20 minus 1 over 20. That's negative 3 over 20. And di will then be, whoops, sorry, not 2, 20. There we go. 20 over 3, 20 over 3 is, what, 6 and 2 thirds, 6.67. So negative 6.67 centimeters, approximately. There we go. Well, what does this tell us? The negative sign tells us it's virtual. So, we have a virtual image? Yes, exactly right. A distance of 6.67? Well, yeah, that's just what we said. About two-thirds of 10. 6.67 is just about two-thirds of 10. So, that looks good. Uh, what about the magnification? Magnification is negative di over do, or negative, negative 6.67 centimeters, divided by do, which is 20 centimeters. So we have a negative and a negative, that gives us a positive. We have 6 over 20, 6 or 6.67 over 20, that's just about 3.33 uh, over 10, or one third, 0 0.333 approximately. So we have uh, a magnification of plus one third, plus 0.333, positive means it is upright, that is exactly what we see, 0.33, about one third the size, that's just what we thought. So, very, very good. We can use the lens equation for diverging lenses just like we did for converging lenses. Very good. Now, we might try uh, another position for the object, maybe inside the focal length. Unfortunately, or not necessarily unfortunately, but the diagram will be very, very similar. And I'll leave that as a homework assignment for you to try that and make sure that you get the same sort of picture that you do here, and uh, the, the solution is in the homework assignment, and you can take a look there. All right, very, very One more thing about the shape of lenses. Let's look at a converging lens, a plano converging lens. So we have a flat surface on one side and a curved surface on the other. The reason this converges the rays is that the front side, if it's flat for a, con a plano converging lens, the rays will just all pass through undeviated, so they'll go straight through. At the other surface, where a ray that goes through the center, that's going to hit a flat surface, that's going to go straight through. A ray that strikes over here, that's going to be bent away from the perpendicular, that's going to be diverged like that, likewise here. Over here, this is tilted at a greater angle, that's going to be diverged a little more, and what happens is they all end up coming through to the same point. So, essentially that is what a converging lens is doing. What is important here is we notice because the front surface is flat, there's no uh, refraction taking place at the front surface. No bending of the light, it's going straight through. All of the refraction is taking place at the back surface. And it doesn't really matter where that back surface is. If we have a relatively thin lens, that's not going to be moving this focal point too much forward and back. So we can actually do something very, very interesting with this lens and make it considerably thinner. Imagine taking this front surface and actually just moving it in over here, like that. So we remove it from this point, take out all of this glass, and just move that front surface in here. This surface up here, we move it in here. Likewise, this one, we move it in here. And then say this surface up here, 
we move it in here, and likewise this one, we move it up here. Whoops, sorry, went the wrong way. And then the last surface, we end up, say, right like that. Whoops. So, we end up with a very, very odd looking lens that is made of a whole bunch of different sections. This is a way of taking a relatively thick lens, removing a considerable amount of glass or plastic, and making a thinner lens that will essentially do the same refraction that the thicker lens will do. This might be something nice that could be done as long as you don't really need perfect optics, like in a telescope or something like that. You couldn't do this in a telescope and still have a very, very nice image. But it is a way of making a much thinner lens that can, can do the, a similar job as a very large uh, lateral lens. This is called a Fresnel lens. I have an example of one here. So this is a lens that was actually taken from a spotlight and you can see that it's made of a whole bunch of concentric sections which have different curvatures but that would match a much larger lens with a greater uh, thickness in the center and it's a way of making a thinner lens without quite so much glass. Uh, you can actually make very, very large Fresnel lenses uh, for uh, lighthouses. Light, the lenses on lighthouses are typically Fresnel lenses. Now, lighthouses are not used like they used to be, but the very, very large lenses on the fronts of the lights of lighthouses are these incredible combinations of lenses and prisms, round, bent prisms, that do essentially the same work as huge, thicker uh, lenses would do, except they're much lighter, much, uh, much less expensive to make, much, they, they need to be light because you need to rotate them around these, these light sources, and so they are really an incredible development from just using a regular uh, thick lens. Is as much as I need to get covered for this, we will be moving on to different aspects of optics. This is this area, as we said before, geometrical optics. We'll be looking at physical optics, what is really happening when light interacts with itself, and we'll start that next time.